hey, can't I set up a self-directed IRA at Fidelity or Schwab or really any other traditional financial brokerage firm? Hey, everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And today's ad bits going to uncover the lies of some of these traditional brokerage firms who claim they are giving you a self-directed IRA when in fact they're not. They're giving you a closed end IRA. Why? Find out. And this is the core reason. And it's pretty simple. It comes down to profits, dollars and cents. When IRAs were created in 1974, Congress, ERISA, the tax code did not distinguish between IRAs that invest in traditional or alternative asset investments, right? There's no particular section that talks about IRAs for real estate or IRAs for stocks or IRAs for mutual funds. No, it doesn't say what you can do. There's only three things you cannot do, and they're found in section 408 and 4975 of the code. And in some, these are the three categories of prohibited types of transactions. One is life insurance, two is collectibles like art, and third under 4975 essentially prohibits one from engaging in any transaction that in any way directly and directly personally benefit to you individually, your lineal descendants, your parents, your children, your spouse, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, or any entities controlled 50% or more by such persons. Because you can't buy a house and live in it. You can't rent an apartment to your child. You can't buy your daughter a car. Um, you can't take your IRA and buy yourself a Rolex watch or go on vacation, right? Whatever the IRA does has to exclusively 100% benefit your IRA. So why doesn't Fidelity or Schwab let you buy real estate or gold or do hard money loans or invest in a private business, non-publicly traded? Why? We know the tax code lets you do it, right? The tax code does not prohibit you from doing anything other than the three aforementioned categories of transactions. So why does the traditional brokerage firm stop you from doing that? Well, as I mentioned, it's pretty, pretty simple. Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard, they don't make money when you take your funds out of their brokerage firm and give it to John Doe to buy his house or take it up to Jane Doe to invest in her startup coffee shop, right? How does that benefit them? It doesn't, right? They make money selling you products, selling you mutual funds, selling you ETFs, making money on your cash, selling investment advice, right? That's a big push Vanguard's been doing now. They're realizing that Companies like Robinhood, E-Trade, TD, they've basically brought down the cost of buying and selling stocks or equities or ETFs to zero, right? You can buy and sell stocks, ETFs, zero commission, okay? So that source of revenue is dried up. Commissions used to be very high, uh, really up until you know the mid-2000s. So that side of their business is dried up. So they've now have to turn to different areas to generate revenues. Some of it has been making money on the funds, right? The funds they are providing you to buy for zero commission, they're making money on the fund side, not necessarily the consumer facing side. They're making money on the fund side, which they're allowed to do as a broker dealer. No problem. It's fully disclosed. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. With that. They have to make money. They also make money on your cash, which again, yeah, it's perfectly fine. It's disclosed. No big deal. But they're not making money on the commission. So they're looking for other sources. Now, if you take your 200 grand or 100 grand or 75 grand out of Vanguard or Schwab and give it to your friend who's starting a new AI private company, they just lost that 75 grand or 100 grand that could be used to buy their products or they can then upsell their investment advice on it. So that's not in their interest. So they're going to stop you from doing it. And they have a right to do that. When you custody IRA, so under Section 408, a bank, financial institution, Okay, or a state chartered trust company like IRA Financial can custody retirement accounts. And you could design your charter to include or exclude any type of investment you wish. For IRA Financial, for example, we are agnostic to investments. We're neutral. We don't make money selling investments. We don't give investment advice. So our charter is, is expansive and broad. Whereas if you go to Fidelity or Schwab, they're going to make sure that you're not allowed to do anything other than what they sell. That's absolute their right. Okay. But 
purpose of today's podcast and then the purpose of what I do every day is to educate people and say, hey, the IRS, they wanted you to just buy stocks, mutual funds, ETFs. They would have just said that, right? Very easy in the tax code to write it. It's so simple. You know, you only can buy these publicly traded securities. That's it. One line. That's it. Only can buy publicly traded securities. That would stop it. They did it. They understand there is importance to diversification. Okay. So the self directed IRA industry was born in 1974, same day IRAs were created by ERISA. No distinction between a true self directed IRA and an IRA. But if you go on the Vanguard, Schwab, Fidelity website, they're going to talk about, hey, we offer you self directed IRAs. You could control your own investments. True, I can decide if I want to buy Tesla or Apple or ETF one or mutual fund two, but that's not really truly self directed, right? I call that closed self directed because you are truly self directed in the sense that you can pick investments that they offer. So it's a closed environment. Whereas a real true self directed IRA, what IRA Financial and some of the other great companies in our industry do, is we're going to let you do anything that's legal, right? We'll custody any asset that's not prohibited. Okay. Because why? Because we don't make money on the investment side. We're aligned with you. We want you to do well. Not that Vanguard and Schwab doesn't, but we're not trying to pitch you investments. We're not saying, hey, you should buy this fund or fund B or fund C or buy and sell stock. We're not looking for trades. We're not looking for commissions. It's not our deal. We're not a broker dealer. We don't give investment advice. We're not regulated by FINRA or the SEC. We're regulated as a trust company that is responsible for IRA annual administration, record keeping, tax filings, and reporting. That's our job. So we complement what you do on the equity side. And we work with these institutions. We're not competing with Fidelity, Vanguard, or Schwab. I don't want to compete with them. I don't like their business. They got a crappy business model, actually. Robinhood and E-Trade, Schwab, and uh, TD, they destroyed their business model. It's a crappy business model. Self-directed IRA, that's a great business model because we're giving people freedom. The products sell themselves, right? My biggest challenge is educating people. Once people learn and know they can do this, they're in. There's nothing more American than the self-directed IRA, right? You get absolute freedom and control to invest in what you want, other than the three aforementioned prohibited categories like life insurance collectibles and self-dealing transactions. Otherwise, you can do it. And that's why I love this industry because it empowers people to invest and have financial independence, do and invest what they want in a tax-efficient manner. And that's a true self-directed IRA. But to summarize and put this all in a nice, neat bow, um, the reason the Fidelities and Schwabs don't let you do this is they don't make money doing it. They want you in their closed environment so they can control the money and basically force you to buy what they sell. That's it. And there's nothing wrong with it. That's their right to make money. We're in a capitalist uh, marketplace and I'm a true hardcore capitalist and I, I respect their business model. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want to be in their business. Uh, but we don't compete with them. We compliment them because people need both. You need to have equities. I own everything. I own equities. I own real estate. I own gold. I even own cryptos. Um, I like to have a diversified portfolio. That's me. I'm I'm a lawyer. I'm not giving anyone investment advice. That's what I do. That's what my financial advisors um, talk to me about and educate me about. And I believe in, in diversification. So I think it's important to have ETFs, mutual funds, equities, fixed income. And, and I do it at some of those institutions I just mentioned. But where I think they fail is they don't explain, educate folks that, hey, you also have other options to diversify. You can do other stuff if you want it. They basically just close the door on that and say, hey, all you can do is what we sell. That's the universe. Nothing else is allowed. Everything else on the outside of our environment is risky and you shouldn't do it. And that's not fair. And, and that's where I push back. And that's where education is important. And that's why I do these podcasts and why I do three to four videos a week is to teach people what the actual code says, not what some sales guy at Schwab says or Fidelity or Vanguard, and not to pick on any of those institutions or companies. They're great companies. I use some of them, but just the whole broker-dealer uh, model, traditional large financial institutions, they're in business to make money. Um, they have fiduciary, in some cases, responsibilities, reasonable care responsibilities, but they're a broker-dealer. They can earn commissions, and they have a duty also to their shareholders to make money. We have a different business model. We have flat fees, and we want to give you the ability to unlock your money, gain freedom and financial independence in a true self directed IRA. So thank you so much for uh, listening. If you're watching on YouTube, I uh, really appreciate it. I hope you are enjoying our uh, awesome 
YouTube channel. You should definitely subscribe if you haven't. And um, I hope you really enjoyed the podcast, really a uh, topic that's near and dear to my heart. So I hope it was uh, fun and uh, somewhat uh, inspirational, educational. And if not, I'm sorry, I will do my best, but come, come check us out again next week. Uh, it's a weekly podcast that gives you a bit of information on various self-directed term asset and tax related topics. So thanks. Have a great day and I'll see everyone again next week. Take care.